Hi, I'm Rick Streaker, Packard's National Training Coordinator. And I'm happy to have with us today Susan Tomlinson. And Susan is Packard's expert on heat exchangers. So Susan, thanks for being here with us today. Thank you for inviting me, Rick. I'm excited to be here and share some heat exchanger information. Yes. So what are heat exchangers? Heat exchangers are devices that we use to transfer heat from one fluid to another. And in our brochure, we have a little diagram that I like to refer to. And what you're doing is you're taking a warm fluid and a cold fluid. You're running them against each other through a device to transfer the heat. So one fluid is going to get hotter, one fluid is going to get cooler. Okay. Now, on heat exchangers, there's more than just one type, isn't there? I think we're showing one year but there's more than one type. There are a lot with. of types of heat exchangers and what we, rep we represent are the plate heat exchangers. On the front of the brochure we have a picture and the ones that have the copper edging are called braze plates and that's what we have with us here today. We also offer the plate and frame style which is the larger model that can be taken apart to be cleaned and these can be anything from a small heat exchanger that will sit here on top of this table to a large heat exchanger that's bigger than you and me. Oh gosh. Now on the braze plate then, mm -hmm. what's, what is it? How, how is it designed? What's, what's it consist of? On a braze plate, what you see here is a sealed unit. We can't take these plates apart. This is made up of individual plates, and so a series of plates will be welded or braised together, and in between every plate, we're going to change the direction of the flow. So one will go this way, one will go that way, the next one will go this way, the next one will go that way. Okay. And if you cut into the braised plate, you can see on the edges of it, all of these plates with these little ridges come together and it looks like a little honeycomb that's all welded together. Inside the plate, mm -hmm. there you can see the edges of the plate with the copper brazing. Okay, huh. And then fluids travel yes. through those. Through it's those amazing, plates. but you have fluids every other plate going the opposite direction through the plate. Now when we look at this plate, there, there's kind of an interesting design to that. Kind of looks like a chevron or something. Right. And the chevron patterns that are designed for the inside of the plate are designed to create turbulence as a fluid moves through the heat exchanger. So you can see there is a direction. So it makes a difference which direction you're going through the heat exchanger, the turbulence that's created. So when you talk about the turbulence, in my mind, it sounds like when I have turbulence for that liquid, it's making sure that we're getting the heat transfer. Right. It helps with the heat transfer. Right. In that. Okay. Right. All right. Where do you use these? We have a lot of applications for the heat exchangers. And if you look at our brochure, we start out with refrigerant applications, and that can be for refrigeration or it can be for air conditioning. And then in the brochure, we also have a lot of hydronic or liquid-to-liquid -liquid applications. Now, when I think of hydronic as compared to refrigeration or air conditioning, there's, there's not a compressor typically in the hydronics that we see in refrigeration. Are these things in refrigeration connected to compressors? They're in the configuration of your solution. Okay. So whether you have a refrigeration or an air conditioning solution, you have a compressor and you have a heat exchanger, but they may be connected through other connecting devices. Okay. So if it's connected ultimately in one way or another through that whole system with the compressor, there's refrigerant flowing through this? Yes. The same refrigerant that is going through the compressor then? Right. Okay. 
does it take different heat exchangers depending upon the refrigerant as it takes different compressors based upon the refrigerant? Yes, it does. Most refrigerants can be used with our standard copper brazed plates. And these plates that are the most popular are rated 450 PSIG maximum operating pressure. So even though different refrigerants have different properties, everything except for 410A or ammonia can go through the standard offering. When we're talking about 410A, we do have a 650 PSIG plate that we sell, and the ammonia applications get a little more complex. They have a few more requirements. Oh, okay. So we've got the refrigerant going through here, same refrigerant that's going through the compressor, but then on hydronics, what's flowing through here in hydronics? On a hydronic application, you're going to have pumps like you think of a pool or you think of a snow melt application. So you have a hot liquid and you have a cold liquid. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a hot source of a boiler or a geothermal system, you can use that going one direction compared to what you're trying to warm up on the other side. So it's not a refrigerant though? No, nope. two liquids. Are there generally typical liquids that are used? When we're talking a snow melt application for hydronics, you would generally see some type of glycol okay. and water. And when you're talking something like a swimming pool, then you would have your salt or your chlorinated water. So the water from the pool flowing through right. that. Okay, all right. Now you, you say glycol, why, why is glycol used in we have to in use glycol like in snow melt applications and in some also refrigerant applications because we want to keep the liquids inside the heat exchanger from freezing. Freezing is one of the reasons a plate can fail. So if you have a refrigerant that needs to be below the freezing point, your other liquid needs to be below or needs to have the glycol added as well. Okay. All right. Now would I use the same material for a snow melt, snow melt as I would for a pool heater, for example? Um, no, you need to have upgraded materials for a pool. A snow melt just has water and glycol typically running through it, which is not corrosive to the copper brazing on the edges, and it's not corrosive to any of the plate material. When you look at a pool, a pool has a lot of chemicals, and even uh, the saltwater pools mm -hmm. have been found to corrode the materials that are in a standard copper braze plate. So we upgrade the plate material to a nickel braze on the outside of the plate for a pool. We also recommend upgrading the interior plate material. Oh. Okay. So obviously those are more expensive when we do that. So we, we try to use the standard copper brazed 316 stainless type plate where we can, but it's important to know the application so that you don't continually replace your braze mm -hmm. plate if you have a corrosive liquid. Okay. So now you, you mentioned replacing. So I've got one of these in an application. I need to replace it. Or maybe I want another one. Maybe I'm increasing the mm -hmm. amount of uh, uh, products that I want uh, right. that mm -hmm. exchange of heat. So what kind of information is needed? What do I have to look at when I'm selecting a, uh, a proper braze plate heat exchanger, for example? To select a plate, the place I like to start is with the manufacturer label. The manufacturer label obviously gives you a part number. It also gives you some of the um, parameters that the plate is designed to operate within. The part number can be intimidating to people. Some manufacturers, including the one that we represent, like to go to a lot of digits in a heat exchanger. Sometimes there's more than one line with information that's very valuable to me when I'm trying to cross a heat exchanger. And so all of these digits mean something, even though they just look like codes, 
yes, they are codes, but it's nomenclature, just like we do with compressors for mm -hmm. many of our manufacturers. The operating conditions are also important. Um, this particular plate is rated 450 PSIG, so we want to make sure we know what's happening with our application to make sure that we're selecting the right operating pressure for the brace plate as well. Mm -hmm. What if I don't have this on there? What it, if that's worn away or just not readable? It happens. Mm -hmm. It happens. So the thing that I recommend if you can't read the label, if you can't find the label, is look at the plate dimensions, the length, the width, the depth. If you can, count the number of plates. The other mm. thing to look at as you're looking at your edges, is it copper brazed or is it nickel brazed? Then when you get to the fittings, how many fittings do you have? Heat exchangers can have fittings on both the front and the back. So how many fittings, where are they located? How big are they? What's your diameter? And what type are they? Are they sweat or are they threaded? Hmm. And there can be other fittings as well, but those are the two most common. Mm -hmm. What about mounting? The mounting bracket that we offer fits a standard bolt pattern. Okay. And some manufacturers do provide them. They don't have to be there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a plate can be mounted locally. It's important to secure a plate so it doesn't move when it's operating, but you know there are a lot of different ways to do it. But it is important to note, if you do require mounting brackets, are they on the same side of the, as the fittings or are they on the opposite? Okay. So now I've got these fittings. This is apparently where I'm getting my liquid in and out. Right. of the uh, heat exchanger. Right. Is it the same on refrigeration as it is on hydronics in terms of this? Well, if you have a refrigerant application with the plates that we sell, you're going to notice a sticker on one side. Okay. And that means that this circuit is going to be where your refrigerant goes. If you're using it as an evaporator, this is your refrigerant in, this is your refrigerant out. If you're using it as a condenser, this is in, this is out. Okay. And then depending on your application, this circuit is the opposite. If you're coming in with refrigerant here, you would come in with your liquid over here so that one is flowing up, one is flowing down. Okay. Hmm. So uh, with the pool then, mm -hmm. uh, is it any different in its construction and its material than what we see on the... the... The pool heat exchanger is going to be the same size and look look about the same, but your edges are going to be the silver for nickel instead okay. of copper. And also, sometimes you'll see on the label what the materials might be. It depends on the manufacturer, whether okay. it tells you what those plate materials are inside the plate or not. So now, if I don't have any of this information on here, is there anywhere I can go that will help me to size this? Well, it goes back to the dimensions of the plate, the location and types of fittings that you have, and then going back to our selection okay. requests, what are your operating conditions? Mm -hmm. If we know the operating conditions, we can size a plate. And depending on what the actual results are, we may or may not come up with exactly the same dimensions, but it's important to look at performance, just like we do mm -hmm. with a compressor. Mm -hmm. You don't want to vary your capacity more than 10 or 15 percent with a compressor. You don't want to do that with a heat exchanger either. Mm -hmm. And throughout our brochure for the different applications, I have a little summary of the design conditions that if you can gather that information, it helps me to size the plate. And then if the standard applications I have throughout the brochure are not helpful in terms of what you really need to do, there's also a generic um, 
request form in our brochure. That works a little more detailed. It is. It's a little intimidating because you don't necessarily need every one of these fields for every application. So on the individual pages, what I've done is I've tried to just pull out the important points that we put into the product selection tools to identify a product. So in the brochure, a steam request is different than a liquid to liquid, hydronic application, um, condensers and evaporators or subcoolers also have a little bit different parameters that we look at, but they're on the individual pages. Okay. So as a technician, is there anything I can do to, to keep these from failing or extend the life of my heat exchanger? Yes. Um, <clears throat> first of all, if you have anything that is getting too cold, we want to keep a plate from freezing. And so if you have a refrigerant application and you're getting below 30 degrees, think about glycol or some type of antifreeze in your liquid, if at all possible. The other thing you always want to make sure is you install it properly in the correct position. You know, a refrigerant application needs to be vertical. A liquid to liquid can be on its back, but we okay. never flip it over, okay. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. So this is a no-no. That's a no-no. Okay. So it won't work. The other thing that we do for your liquid inlets on a plate, you want to make sure you have Y strainers in place with 20 to 40 mesh because once sediment gets inside a braised plate, it's hard to get out. You can reverse flush it and have a process to do that periodically depending on your situation, but it's always a good idea to prevent as opposed to fix it later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is just make sure that we're installing the right heat exchanger in the right application. It makes everybody's life a lot easier. And also in regards to temperatures that you're trying to force through a heat exchanger, if you try to keep your temperature difference between the two sides under 200 degrees, that helps eliminate the thermal stress okay. possibility. Okay. There's a lot to consider, isn't there? There is a lot not, to consider. But you know it, so it's easy to come to you and try and get answers then. Yes, so. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. I work with these every day, so this is not something that came to me overnight. <laughs> well, we really appreciate you being here today, Susan. I want everybody to know that uh, Susan's a great resource, and please feel free, uh, if you have questions on heat exchangers, to contact Susan. She'd be more than happy to help you out. We thank you for being here today. Come back and see us at the Packard Academy real soon.